When it comes to practical frugality, we learned an awful lot from Larry's parents. Hi, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. From Under the Median. We wanted to do a program all about practical frugality and realized that most of what we do on a daily basis, all of those frugal habits that we practice, well, we learned them from Larry's parents. So we're going to tell you today all of the practical frugality strategies that we learn from Larry's mom and dad. But first, we want to introduce you to the sponsor for today's video, Creekmore Wealth Advisors. John Creekmore and the team over at Creekmore Wealth have been our personal financial planners for a number of years. Many years. Now, if you want practical advice, then John is the guy to talk to. He would mm -hmm. love to answer all of your questions about financial planning, about retirement planning, and about investing. There's a link in the description of the video and we highly, highly recommend John and the crew over at Creekmer Wealth Advisors. But he can answer your questions, caveat, only if you live in the 50 United States. But once again, there's a link in the description of the video. Be sure to tell them that Hope and Larry sent you. You know, one of the things I liked about John Creekmer when we first joined their team is that they got our money really working for us in a way that it had never worked. He knew how to put our money into good, solid investments that gave it a good return. So we're very happy with the advice that they've given us and what it's done for our portfolio. All right, let's talk about what mom and dad taught us about frugality. First of all, they taught us one really important thing. It has to do with food. Grow your own. Always have a little patch of ground that you have dug up and you are growing something in your backyard or on your patio <laughs> or on a windowsill, wherever you can put something that is growing do it. Well, mom and dad, of course, were really used to that. They were both farm raised, so mm -hmm. they were used to growing their own food for sure. And they kept a garden all their married lives, even into their elder years, where they had at least something that they could gather out of their garden and eat fresh. Now, and I think part of that desire to make sure that you always had some food on hand was that they were born in, uh, let's see, dad, 1915, yeah, mom, mom, 1921. 1921. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they were children and teenagers in the Great Depression and having gone through that and World War II. More than the Great Depression, guys, I, I think mom really, when she talked to me, the time that really stuck in her mind was when she was a young parent uh, during World War II and all the rationing. And even after the war was over, there were an awful, awful lot of things that you really could not get for a very long time. So I think those experiences really shaped a lot of how they felt about frugality. The next thing they taught us was to buy less quantity of items and buy higher quality. Now, what does that do? Well, that helps you have items in your home. They're mm -hmm. going to last longer. And in the long run, they're going to hold up better and you will spend less money for them. Right. Which, which leads us right into the next strategy, which is that you need to take care of what you own. So you're going to spend a little bit of money on it, but then you're going to make sure that you take care of it. Dad had like a like a, a cycle, like he, like he had a written cycle of how often he like, you know, lubed things and took things apart and looked oh, yeah. at them. And now, every spring he would, he would take apart the fans. We had uh, desk fans from the 1940s and he kept those working for about 50 years by lubricating them, cleaning them, uh, gre greasing the ball bearings, whatever they needed, he would do it and they would work like new by the time he got done with them. So that made them last a lot longer. They were well-made mm -hmm. and he knew how to service mm -hmm. them. And don't replace something unless it's truly worn out. Mom and dad kept things like forever. Oh yeah. And, and they didn't replace it. If they were replacing it, you knew like it, there was no saving it. <laughs> Yeah, by the time that something was replaced, it's because dad had made the absolute last possible repair on that item. Uh, so, and once again, since they bought pretty good items, they did last a long time, but they would eventually, some of the items would have to be replaced, of course. Know the difference between a want and a need. Um, I, I can't remember them truly uh, getting on this bandwagon, guys, of 
constantly replacing something with a new model? Like how many of us, you know, look at the, the ads when the, the new iPhones come out? Now, if you're like me, okay, those of you who are proudly carrying your iPhone 6S around to this day and you're okay with it, let me know in the comment section. Uh, this day, I, I think that manufacturing is designed mm -hmm. to go right to waste. I, I really think it's meant to be disposable. Well, that's a trick of the trade that's been around for years and years, uh, planned obsolescence. Mm -hmm. It's especially true with computers and iPhones mm -hmm. and so on. But that was, that was was that's always been kind of the case. Mm -hmm. they, they kind out with a new model it has it has new features uh, uh, things that the old one wouldn't do it just looks better it works better it's faster it's shinier whatever it, whatever the improvement yeah. might, might be it is alluring but you have to think well am I okay with working with the one that I have do I really need all of that or can I wait dad was a great DIYer he decided he could do it himself an awful lot. Now, this is before the internet, guys. So he actually went to the library and checked out books on how to repair his Ford. Actually, I think he owned books. Weren't they in the basement? How to fix your Ford? No, actually, they, like were, they were in the living room book <laughs> Oh, they were in the living room. Yeah. Yeah, I gave him a book on how to fix. It's called. It was called Fix Your Ford. There you go. And not that he needed it that much, but I gave him one. He, he was still... He still owned that book even after we broke up housekeeping. So I, mm -hmm. I found it in the house. But yeah, dad, dad did a lot of, of research on items. and he, Or he would ask somebody. He would find out how to repair something. And, uh, and then he would do that work himself. So he did a lot of, of stuff himself. If he couldn't DIY it, he would often barter it. He would find something that he had that someone else wanted and he would trade. Do y'all like bartering? We've always had in our married life, always had a couple of different barters going on with people. Uh, when when we really wanted something or needed something, we'd figure out skills that we had or things that we owned and oh, yeah. we'd barter for it. Oh, I've done it so many times. I, I had a TV I wanted fixed. And a friend of mine knew how to repair it. So I would just give him something that I had in place of, of, of a payment in order to get the item fixed. He spent some time on it. So that's an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. Don't look for reasons to spend your money. Mom and dad, really, they were pretty comfortable with what they owned. They were happy with it. They seemed content, I think, with the things that they owned, and they didn't look around for reasons to buy new things. They certainly couldn't be uh, convicted of being guilty of keeping up with the Joneses because that's something they did absolutely <laughs> did not do. Uh, no, they, they kept things in the, we have one of their old original bookcases. I mean, they just didn't replace things. We have their uh, original kitchen set that was in their home. And although it had been relegated as a is a laundry table by the time we got it. And the only reason it was a laundry table is that they had grandma's uh, chrome table and chair sets from the 50s in its place. So no, they didn't look for reasons to replace things. We bartered for that. Yeah, we, we did. We had a really old yucky table. And it was said, given to us. We said, mom, you could fold clothes on this really yucky, ugly table and we would love to have like the table. They had bought it in 1941. It's the first piece of furniture they bought after they got married. And it was downstairs in the laundry room. We said, you want to like trade us? And so not only did they trade us, but they, they, they repainted, repainted it, it they for repainted us before it. they gave it to us. So we still have that in our kitchen and they put a day. they put a plastic tablecloth over the yucky one that we gave them and it looked just fine in their laundry room <laughs> yeah they didn't care what they were folding they were, nope. they were folding clothes on <laughs> all right uh nickels and dimes add up to dollars now mom and dad kept track of every penny they spent in fact we still have their expense book we have dad's expense book from 1941 so we know that when they got married uh he worked a half a day because they were getting married in the evening. So, you know, you can go ahead and work half a day, right? Mm -hmm. And he bought a hat. That was his splurge on his wedding day. He bought a new hat to get married in. Yeah, they didn't uh, They didn't spend a lot of money on that wedding, that's for sure. So, they didn't have it to spend. Yeah, they understood the importance of saving a little bit of money across a long period of time, and then they had a lot of money to do what they wanted to. They really were the ones that taught us what we tell you all the time on this channel, and that is that frugality is not about deprivation. 
It is about choosing when, where, and how you will spend your money. So if you don't nickel and dime yourself, you're gonna have those dollars when you wanna spend it on something really, really meaningful. Uh, so people ask us all the time, do you spend money? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We absolutely spend money. And when we spend money, we spend money. But the reason we can do that is because we don't spend a lot of money on a lot of other things. And we save those nickels and dimes. Yeah, nickels and dimes add up for sure. They also practice good money habits. Uh, and of course, one of them was that they kept an expense book, as Hope mentioned. Uh, they, they tracked everything that they spent. So they knew where their money was going. And they made sure that they didn't spend more than they made. And they had a savings account. And they kept money in savings and kept adding to that. But they tracked it very closely. So they always knew what they were doing with it. Here's something else they did that may not seem related to frugality. But Benjamin Franklin would, would differ with you because he's the one who said... <laughs> Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. And they did. They went to bed early and they got up early. Yeah, well, that's just practicing good good health habits. If, if you feel good and you live consistently in terms of bedtimes, uh, then then you're, you're going to be more frugal because you won't be looking for something to make you happy. Usually if you're not feeling good, you're unhappy, and that can lead to extra spending. So if, if, you, if you feel good and you live with that discipline, then, yeah, it's, it's going to cost you less. You'll be healthier. That's going to cost you less. There's long, all kinds of advantages to that. Mom and Dad were always reading books, always. Uh, you, we would stop by at 7 o'clock in the evening, and you would hardly ever see the television on. Now, they had one, but when they watched television, it was because they chose to mm -hmm. watch a specific program. Seldom did you see them with a television on without the television being on for a purpose. Yeah. Very seldom. Yeah, right, right. They, they would be reading a, a magazine, reading a book, uh, Dad would sometimes be reading the dictionary. He did. <laughs> he loved to learn new words. So yeah. he would just have this great big dictionary and he'd be going through the dictionary, learning new words, learning new word means, meanings. And I mean, he, he was very active uh, as far as being able to discuss current topics with you and thing mm -hmm. up until the time he died when he was 90 years old. There was hardly a topic that you could bring up that he hadn't read something about. He read Popular Science magazine, so he kept up with new innovations and new developments, scientific discoveries. Now, he was uh, an amazing man. He could quote to me formulas that he learned in physics and chemistry from high school. So he, he was uh, had a very sharp mind, and he kept it sharp by reading. So did Mom. They knew really, really well the importance of working hard, and then resting. Uh, you would not find them working still at eight or nine o'clock at night. They mm -hmm. got up early, they worked hard, and then they rested. But during their downtime, and this is our point, they understood the importance of making good use of that rest time. They they would be constantly learning a new um, a new skill. They would uh, learn new information. They would constantly be using that time to their best advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they also sought opportunities to better themselves. Uh, Dad, off, he was a self-study person. You probably got that idea. I mean, <laughs> uh, Dad started college, never finished because he got really, really sick and mm -hmm. had to come home from college. Uh, but he was a very, very smart man, very intelligent. And he was constantly figuring out what he wanted to know next and then figuring out how to find that out. Even when he was a young man, he would figure out what a skill was that he needed to know. And he would figure out ways to get to know that skill and to understand. Yeah, he was a self-taught mechanic. And that's what he was a machinist uh, in, in a factory. And he could do a lot of, I, I would call it more than just minor work on a car. Uh, he wouldn't overhaul an engine, but he could do all of the typical repairs that you had to take a car into the garage for. And, and he was constantly working on his cars. I remember a neighbor saying, if Jim wears cars don't start, nobody's cars are starting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much true. And speaking of working in a factory, he taught Larry a super important lesson when Larry was a very young man, and that is the importance of being happy in your job. Why is that frugal? Because if you don't have a job, well, you don't have income and you don't have money to be frugal with. <laughs> you know, there's so many caveats that go along with that. If you're happy 
on your job. And he, mm-hmm. one of the things he told me when I came home disgruntled about a new job that I had was you can find reasons to be happy on that job. And if you're happy in your work, you're going to enjoy your work. You're going to do a better job. You're going to be more valuable to your company. You're probably going to be in line for some upgrades. And and they're going to enjoy you more. So the other thing that he said to me was put everything you have into that job. Mm -hmm. Do it well. Do it to the very best of your ability. And uh, when you do that, you become a valued employee. And a valued employee gets a return for that value. Now, the next thing they taught us is really, I think, very interesting. And that was to avoid debt when you can. Uh, They did go into debt, not often, Mm -mm. uh, but they would choose really, really carefully what was worth going into debt for and what just wasn't. They went into debt on their first home. They paid cash for their second home. They went into debt on cars. Uh, This was back when I was pretty young and mom was still a stay-at-home mom. Uh, But dad didn't buy real expensive cars. He would buy a car maybe, maybe three or four years old. And uh, he he would put a pretty good down payment on it. So if they went into debt, they went into debt in a way that they could very easily pay that back. Um, so as they got older, they didn't uh, they didn't go into debt at all. I don't think they 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 paid cash for all of their cars after I know after uh, a certain point in time that they they did. So, uh, but they they were very judicious with debt for mm-hmm. sure. Just a reminder, this is an open conversation. We'd love to hear from y'all in the comments section. Tell us what you do to save money and what frugal tips did you learn from your parents or your grandparents? Enjoy simple pleasures that don't cost money. Uh, Larry's family was incredibly, and I do mean incredibly, close-knit family, and it was not unusual at all all if you had not seen extended family for, I don't know, say three or four weeks, <laughs> uh, somebody would start the family phone tree. And one person would start by calling the next person and saying, hey, it's been a while. Let's all get together for a picnic. Or everybody come over here. Anybody that can make it Saturday night, seven o'clock, my house, everybody bring a dish. Really, really common in his family. They liked spending time together rather than spending money together. I can't remember even one week that would go by that we wouldn't see at least one or two sets of relatives show up at the mm-hmm. house. And they would come over and just have conversation or mm-hmm. uh, play pinochle. They like to do that. Uh, but they found ways to just enjoy each other, just enjoy the time that they spent together. Yeah, playing card games, going on picnics, uh, things like that, very, very common mm-hmm. uh, in Larry's family. And so, so you understand, part of the reason they were close-knit is because Larry's mother's older brother married Larry's father's sister. So you had two sisters and brothers who got married to one another. And so they were all double cousins. So everybody got up together and everybody got along with each other, guys. We always knew we were going to see that family at any family (laughs) gathering, no matter what it was. Spend money a little on something fun. Yeah. That's the next thing that they taught us. Uh, Mom and dad weren't weren't big on spending a huge amount of money on fun, but they understood the importance of letting go a little. Well, when I was about uh, 10 years old, they bought a, a, dad bought a brand new car and a used trailer that year. Mm -hmm. And we went camping every two weeks. We went on a weekend camping trip. They, They belonged to a camping club. It didn't cost a lot of money back then. Camping wasn't wasn't very expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, they enjoyed the the group. We all knew each other. Lots of kids in that group, and we just had a blast. And the other thing is that we took an annual vacation. Uh, I had an older brother that lived out in Colorado. We'd go see him quite a bit. They took some trips to the East Coast, uh, and when we we went up into mm-hmm. Canada. We went down south. We just about went to every state yeah. in the forty eight states by car and trailer. It was a really nice way to grow up, but they lived very lean the rest of the year in order to have some money to really treat us to a nice vacation. Don't panic. Mom taught me this really, really early on in our marriage. Uh, We'd probably been married, I don't know, 
two, three, four months and uh, we had saved up a little bit of money and something happened and we had to spend it. Well, I was devastated. And we went over there that night and mom said, what's wrong? And I said, you know, we took two steps forward. We went one step back and she said, oh, honey, that's life. <laughs> that never expect life to be a straight trajectory, but don't panic uh, because then you're going to make moves that later on you think, boy, I should never have panicked making that move. Whenever you make a move and you've not thought through it carefully, that's not going to be a good thing. But uh, mm -hmm. she assured me that this was to be expected. This was life and not to worry about it. As long as you were taking those two steps forward, you were doing just fine. Yeah. No, they had their feet solid on the ground. Yeah, they did. Very, very common sense people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Keep your sense of humor. Yeah. doesn't seem frugal, but it kind of goes along with don't panic. No, you know, it's good to see the light side of things, even even if you're in tough times. Uh, you know, some of the best movies, I think, were made back in the uh, We you're Lost the Light. To, some we, of the great... we definitely lost the light there. Yeah, Hang we on. did right there. It must have been on battery power. Oops, 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 oops. It's, it's always good to keep your sense of humor because, uh, you know, things happen that you don't expect and how we respond to them mm -hmm. can make a big difference uh, in, in the quality of our lives. And I think it's just good to be able to see things on the lighter side. It just, it helps us get through things. Always have a side job. Always have a little something going on the side. Dad always did. As long as I could remember, he always had a little thing, some little things he had going on the side where he could bring in just a little bit of extra money. Yeah, you know, he did a lot of work for neighbors. Uh, he would wash windows back in the days when you had to take the windows down oh, yeah. and and uh, wash them. They weren't. Uh, they were storm windows, we called them in those days. And and he did that for a lot of elderly neighbors. That helped them a little bit too, gave them a little extra cash. So it's good. I, I had a side job that I started uh, after we got married and started having kids. I bought a camcorder and I began doing wedding videos. I did very simple wedding videos. I didn't charge a lot for them, but they gave us a little a little extra income, something to kind of help. It was, uh, it was a good, it's good just to have a little something on the side that you can do that will fill in in case you need a little extra money. Always have a rainy day fund. That's what mom and dad called it, a rainy day fund. We would call it an emergency fund, right? Yeah, yeah. Officially, the Dave Ramsey term is an emergency fund. But yes, yeah. but the mom and dad term is rainy, rainy day, day fund. fund. <laughs> yeah, well, and they wouldn't panic if they needed to spend extra money because they, they never spent all of their money on something. They always mm -hmm. had reserves in the bank. Uh, and in case that they needed it, they, they had something they could fall back on. And Hope and I have lived our lives that way, too. So if something happens, the, the water heater goes out, the radiator goes out on the car, pipe busts in the basement. Gee, we've had all those things happen. Yeah. Uh, if you we, guys ever had anything unexpected happen, tell us in the uh, comments section. You guys have lived through unexpected events in the last 12 months. We've shown you all of them. Well, from most of your comments, I think you're all living pretty good, sounds like to me. But yeah, that's it's always good to have that. And then you don't panic and you just, uh, I think it's just a lot nicer to live with that. Be content with what you have. Uh, if mom and dad replaced something, it was because it was so worn out. Last legs. That there was no salvaging it at that point. Yeah. Uh, dad, so so if it squeaked, you put oil on it. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was broken, you put epoxy on it. That was dad's <laughs> thing. Yeah. Epoxy yeah. that baby back together again. It'll be just fine. I remember they, Duct tape, duct tape was good. <laughs> I, I remember they finally re replaced this old vacuum cleaner they had. It was barely sucking in any thing and they they finally replaced that uh it uh it's it was amazing what it took for them to actually replace an item but it had to be in pretty pretty bad shape but you know having that sense of being okay with delayed gratification that was another one that they taught us was just bide your time we'd get you know antsy get in a hurry they're like bide your time bide your time they taught us to take a deep breath and bide our time mm -hmm. really important um be flexible Mom and dad had to learn flexibility. My word, they went through the Great Depression and World War II in the aftermath of World War II. You had to be pretty flexible. Well, life isn't linear. It doesn't just run 
systematically. There's mm -hmm. ups and downs and unexpected turns that it takes. So you have to kind of be flexible, learn to, to adjust to different things as they come along the way. And um, they did that very well with, with uh, so many challenges that they had to face. Let's talk about some of the frugality strategies they taught us when it comes to food. One of the things mom taught me, and this is more a little bit to do with hospitality, and I do think that this came from having gone through the Great Depression, and that is when you're invited out somewhere, you always take a, a dish to share because what was important to them was showing their host or hostess that they understood that you know, they they were being invited over and they needed to share in uh, providing the food for that meal. Yeah, it was an expression of appreciation for yeah. for the invite. So yeah, they, she always came over with a pumpkin pie or something, which I was all for. I was on board for all that stuff. <laughs> Custard pie. Oh yeah, yeah, bring it on, mom. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> so uh, making sure that you are sharing your resources with others, that's really what that was. Um, and she said in the Great Depression, mom was like, nobody had anything. If you got together at somebody's house for dinner, like everybody had to pool their resources because you never knew what other people were going to have. And you never like, you never told the person that was coming over what to bring because it was the depression. They didn't know what they had on hand. Mm -hmm. So you always found something you had on hand and made something for the get together. And that carried over all, and I do mean all of the rest of their life that they always made sure that they were sharing with others what they had, especially if you were invited. Yeah. Over. Another food related uh, tip would be to eat simple and eat real food. Boy, you didn't see chips, maybe? I mean, there wasn't a lot of prefab food in mom and dad's home. Not too much. They would buy potato chips occasionally. No, they pretty much ate real food, potatoes, corn, you know, beef. They had, they had meat, lettuce, salads, that kind of thing. But uh, they, they ate pretty simply. I mean, they, they did eat simple. And they didn't spend a lot of money on prepackaged foods. They they just kept to a, a pretty simple diet. They did not overeat. That's the no, other thing didn't. that they taught us as far as food was concerned. Don't stuff yourself. <laughs> I don't think I ever saw, even at Thanksgiving, I don't, or Christmas dinners, I never saw mom and dad like eating voluminous amounts of food. They, I, they really I, I would. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah you did. <laughs> uh, don't waste food. Don't throw food out. If there was food left over, like a little bit of beef left over from the roast, then of course that was either gonna get ground up to make a sandwich spread the next day, or it was gonna get chopped up real tiny and put into soup, but you never ever. Soup bones, mm -mm, you were not gonna throw that out. Mom and dad learned really early in their life that you do not throw out food, you use it all. Yeah, mashed potatoes became fried potatoes the next Absolutely. day. Absolutely, or potato would, pancakes. Pota yep. Well, that yeah, that's yep. what they were, yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, glean from nature. It was very common. Like if you had a local farm that had a pick it yourself option and you could save a little bit per pound by going into the field, picking it yourself. Mom and dad were all about that. They were there bright mm -hmm. and early and happy <laughs> yeah. to pick in that farmer's field. Uh, they would glean uh, the mushrooms, y'all that go mushroom hunting. Uh, they would, they had a friend that had six uh, black walnut trees on their property and they would go every year and they would uh, glean the black walnuts and dry the black walnuts on huge like things in their garage, these little trays that dad made from wood to hold the black walnuts while oh, they yeah. dried. Yeah. And then dad would sit out there for a couple hours in the evening, listen to music on the radio or listen to the ball game while he was cracking black walnuts. Glean from nature because most, for the most part, you know, if you were gleaning from nature, it was free. They had a fireplace in their, in our old house. And one of the neighbors was wanting to clean out some of their woods. Mm -hmm. And so they invited our whole family over and we hauled home a whole year's worth of wood for that fireplace. It was all free. And dad spent the better part of that summer and fall cutting that all up. Uh, and it usually requires a little effort on your mm -hmm. part uh, to, to glean that way, but it did pay off. And we did enjoy having a fireplace in the wintertime. It was really nice, nice touch. Repurpose everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Once something was, uh, was used, well, let's just take a, a, a container that you, you 
bring food home from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And we do this. We, we use a container over and over and over again. We had some ice cream brought over to us. I think it must have been 10 years ago. <laughs> and we're still using those same containers to put our leftovers in. Rather than buying a lot of Tupperware and Rubbermaid and so on, we reuse containers. And that's a lot cheaper than having to buy all that stuff. Hey, as we go through our list today, we'd love to hear from you all in the comments section. Tell us whether you do these things and is there anything that we missed on our list of frugal ways to live? Things that you learned from your parents or your grandparents and let us know in the comments section. We love hearing from you. Another important thing that mom and dad did was that they knew how to work hard, but they also knew how to rest. So they'd get up in the morning and start their chores for that day, spend uh, most of the yeah. morning being busy. Anything that they did, they were always washing windows and cleaning and, mm -hmm. and doing yard work or whatever needed to be done. And then at the evening time, they knew how to take it off, take a break, take some time out, read a book, watch a movie on TV, and relax. So it's good to work hard and then relax. Nice balance. Everything is about balance. Hey, we want to thank once again the sponsor for today's video, Creekmer Wealth Advisors, and remind you there's a link where you can contact them. It is in the description of the video. Be sure to tell them Hope and Larry sent you. If you want to know what to watch next, there's a video. We did a three-part series. We gave you 70 creative ways that we save money. There's a link to that video series right over there.